listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. All Hit Radio. To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Worldwide, toll free 800 610 7035. Email Exxon at Exxon Radio TV dot com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and the main radio site where you can listen to the Exxon during the live broadcast Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight or if you'd like to listen to the Exxon at any time of the day between those hours when you can actually listen to shows from the past at www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Stephen A. Herman, and uh, he is a, let me see, an acclaimed as a detailed and accurate medium. He is world famous medium with uh, incredible talent through his highly detailed and accurate mediumship. Stephen is able to provide first-hand proof that life after death does exist by specific messages containing names, dates, and places only known to the individual receiving the reading. Now, joining me from his home in New Zealand is the Reverend Stephen A. Herman. And uh, Stephen, welcome back to the X-Zone. Yeah, it's great to be here. How are things in uh, New Zealand tonight or this morning? You know, it's beautiful and sunny here right now. I, I live right by the water. I've got a tsunami siren in my driveway where I live. Wow. So if anything's going to happen, you'll hear it first. That's right. If Godzilla suddenly <laughs> decides to move toward New Zealand, the tidal waves will hit here first. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, uh, can you share with our listeners your story, uh, how you ended up being the the incredible medium that you are? Oh, gosh. Well, I'm, I'm actually from the States. I grew up in Massachusetts, but I'm based in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And I, I work internationally, so I, I go all over the place working. And But I've been involved in mediumship. I've pretty much been mediumistic my whole life, but it's also something where I've had a lot of training as well. What was it in your life that, that, that determined that you were going to be a, a medium was it a special calling was it something that happened in your own personal life what was it well you know with with, with, me, with mediumship psychic ability is completely natural mm-hmm. so i don't like to put mediums up on some type of pedestal like mediumistic ability is some type of super special power that that's extraordinary that other people don't have right. everybody has this ability it's just like artistic or musical ability and it can be cultivated through the right type of training Practice, practice, and more practice. Yeah, and being, being, you know, having the right teachers, being in a structured education. A lot of what I do is teaching work. Mm -hmm. So, Stephen, what is the purpose of mediumship? Well, the purpose of mediumship is is to get people in touch with themselves as divine spirit and ultimately their relationship with God or the Supreme. And part of mediumship really involves healing and also can certainly help bring confirmation that there's life after the physical destruction of the body. You know, life's eternal. You said destruction of the of the uh, physical body. Yeah, because we're all going to kick the bucket, yeah. aren't we? Uh, I, so, so I'm told. Ho- I... Hopefully not Thursday at 4.30 this week, but we're, we're all going <laughs> to pass over, right? Right. So, so what happens to us when we die? Well, we, 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 have, we have a physical body, and then we also have different subtle types of coverings. So... <clears throat> In my father's house are many mansions. Mm-hmm. That's what Jesus said, which doesn't mean that there's – he's not talking about housing developments, is he? I don't think no, so. No. There's a, lot, there's a lot of different levels, just like there's a lot of different physical 
planets here in this this universe. There's also a lot of um, higher dimensional planets or locations. So once someone ceases to function physically as a personality, they continue in into the spirit world or into this other dimension. So what was it like, Stephen, the very first time that you realized that you were being used as a conduit from one reality to the next? Well, I think, you know, the first time I ever talked to the spirit world was when I was two years old. Mm-hmm. My, my mom's father communicated with me. Right. And he, he had passed over, I guess it must have been like, you know, 20 something years before I was born, you know, so I never really knew the guy physically. But that type of experience is really, really, really common for children who are young. It's pretty normal for them to be open. It's just within this culture, people tend to be conditioned, you know, out of it, so to speak. A lot of emphasis is placed on the analytical mind, which mm-hmm. is great if you're going to be an engineer. But we see that a lot of people who get into mediumship are very artistically oriented. You know, they use the creative, intuitive part of their mind. So tell me, what's it like in the spirit world? Well, it's just like it is here in one sense. Other than the fact that there's there's no uh, you know we, we, it's 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 a uh, less uh, dense type of uh, material there mm-hmm. it, it, it's not like physical matter the same way so pe- people have activities it's not like you just merge into some bright white light and cease to exist as an individual. Well, what and the information I'm sorry the information that you get from those on the other side how would you describe what it's like? Well, the thing is is. <clears throat> It would be just like if we were to describe any uh, area in the physical plane. It really depends on the mentality and the perspective of the person who's doing the communication. Mm -hmm. But if you needed 50 years of psychotherapy and you didn't get it when you're here in the physical, you're going to definitely have to work on those things once you go into the spirit world. It's not like you instantly are elevated to some type of high level and you wear a white hospital gown. So why why do we go to the physical why do we go back to where we came in essence You you're talking about on uh, after after uh, after physical death well the personality is eternal so we're not we're not physical we're spiritual you know the the body is just like a car or a vehicle just like the clothes that we're wearing hmm. So every every 7 years we get a new body you know every cell every molecule is changing right but the personality stays the same so when you go into the spirit world, you know, you have relationships, you may have people, your children or people you're very close to, mm-hmm. even people you hate their guts, there is some type of connection there. And those connections are not severed after <clears throat> the physical body doesn't work anymore. So we remain friends, we remain uh, connected to people, even though we Absolutely. die? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and and that, that's the whole thing. I mean, with mediumship, mm-hmm. a lot of times the people in the spirit world they want to communicate with people here in physical more, maybe more so than they want to communicate with them. You know, it's a, a session with a medium. It's not necessarily just to help the person here. It's also helping people in spirit. Let me ask you, have you ever uh, gone to a shopping center or through the airport or even downtown in, in New Zealand or on a beach? And have you ever been given a message from the other side to give to somebody on this side? And have you ever gone up to them and said, hey, you're not going to believe this, but I've got a message for you from your Aunt Matilda? Uh, you know, the, the way I work, it's, it's, it's really disciplined. So mm-hmm. one of the things, if someone has good training and yep. they've really been through any kind of training program, one of the first things they're going to learn in terms of discipline in their mediumship is how to turn it on, how to turn it off. So there's a time and a place for it. And going into Walmart or going to the shopping mall mm-hmm. or wherever it is isn't the time to open up. So that's not going to happen. Now, there are people who are very, very, very open that way and they you know, they might have those types of experiences. Yeah. But that really just has a lot to do with their lack of training. Or they're not necessarily um, <clears throat> knowledgeable about how to do it. Yeah, I, I've seen I've seen commercials for the the Long Island Medium where she's in her, you know she's doing her shopping and she gets this message and she goes right over to a person and she says how high you know you're not going to believe this but and I think how stupid how cruel yeah, it's, it's that's pretty retarded yeah. I mean she's probably a really nice person I, I've seen like five or 
you know, five or ten minutes yeah. a few years ago when it first came out. Uh, but that's that's like kind of like everything that you would learn not to do if you're a trained medium. It's just like mm-hmm. if you're a dentist. Yeah. You wouldn't walk around, go up to people, look in their mouths and start yanking out their cavities. True. I mean, it wouldn't be ethical, but there's a time and a place for that. And so with mediumship, mm-hmm. you really have to have the right connections. You have to have the right atmosphere. And there has to be reverence for what's taking place. And that's just that's just pretty shoddy in my view. You know, it's, it's not what it's about. But I guess for Hollywood, you know, it's, it's good entertainment. People yeah. like things like that because it's, it's sensationalistic. But what does that do towards a credible medium like yourself who takes your, your gift and what you do very seriously? You know, here you've got this this bimbo going around. Uh, you know, she she seems a little loose in the head, in my in my opinion. Yeah, but what I the hell? Really watched enough, but you're probably right. I mean, I think it's probably you know, it's 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 TV, so that's that's what sells, and people like watching that. But it, it really is something that, as a as as a medium, people mm-hmm. have enough weird ideas about this stuff anyway. Yeah, that just perpetuates it. Uh, <laughs> So I, I certainly, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, that's what they think it is. I mean, I guess it's good in the sense that it exposes to them, but then it's the wrong type of exposure in my view. But you see, that's why you have the great reputation that you have, because you're not a weirdo. You're a very sensitive, a down-to-earth person. And I've got a book out, too, that's new that just came out this year, Mediumship oh. Mastery. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, well, it's, it's just came out in, in April. It's called Medium Sh- Mastery, The yeah. Mechanics of Receiving Spirit Communications mm-hmm. and The Ultimate Guide. And I actually made uh, number one on Amazon on um, releases for within that category. So it's, it's quite good. It's gotten ex- excellent reviews worldwide. Hey, congratulations on that. Um, how, do, how does it feel to as a medium to bring a spirit, you know, through communication? Well, the, th- the thing with mediumship is when you're working, it's it's really – it affects your whole central nervous system. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like your entire body goes into fight or flight. Yeah. You know, your heart rate, everything's going to increase. And you feel like you're standing or, or uh, connecting with this greater power. Mm-hmm. So you really feel exhilarated or high after while you're working and after you're working as well. It, 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 it's quite nice. Now, now, the way I work, I mean, I'm working mentally. So I'm telepathically or menti- mentally receiving the communications. Mm-hmm. And it's awesome. It's such a beautiful feeling. Do you find it very strenuous work? Is well, it, are it's, you, not, it's really something that gives mm-hmm. me a lot of energy. I mean, the only problem is when you get into this, a lot of people who might consult a medium, they don't really understand the mechanics of it. They don't necessarily understand how it works. So they can be very needy. I mean, they might be psychologically or emotionally in a mm-hmm. place where they're really going through a lot. So they don't necessarily give you a lot of energy when you're working. You know, so if, it'd be just like if you're a psychotherapist and you had, you know, 10 manic depressive <laughs> suicidal people one after the other. Right. You could really burn yourself out if you didn't have good energetic boundaries. So with mediumship, mm-hmm. you have to do a lot of uh, self-care. I mean, like I'm a vegetarian. You know, I do a lot of um, meditation. I probably meditate two hours a day. You know, I, I work out a lot. I, I try to think positive or, you know, psychologically stay healthy, this type of thing. Gotcha. Uh, you, you have to eat right, all, all these things. So. But even so, you're dealing with people who really need help. So you have to really balance out what you're doing. It's, it's really important. Otherwise, you could burn out. When you try, let, let's say somebody goes to you and they sit down and, you know, they say that they'd like to communicate with their Uncle Stanley, who died 20 years ago. How do you find Uncle Stanley on the other side with all of these souls who've been there from the day one. Well, I guess that the thing is there's, there's a couple things. And first of all, you can't really call up the spirit world. Oh. You know, like let's just say, say I really want to de- desperately hear from my mother, mm-hmm. you know, and I pay the 200 bucks or whatever, you know, for the five minute um, reading with a celebrity medium, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, you can't call them up. If you make an appointment, let's just say you're going to make an appointment with me. Okay. You'd also be making an appointment with the spirit world. Now, you have guides, higher guides. You also have loved ones. You could have your third wife, sister, or whoever, mm-hmm. you know, different acquaintances, people who potentially could come through. Once uh, <clears throat> you've made the appointment, your guides would connect in with my team of helpers who work with me, who facilitate it, and they would decide who's going to come through and what the content or the agenda of the session is going to be. Now, that doesn't mean your mom wouldn't come through. I mean, you could even ask for your mom and you know, she might come through just like that. But right. 
you could show, I mean, it could be someone you're not even, it, it's, you could go for the session and it could be maybe a colleague at work who's going through a lot and, and the guy's father comes through. Maybe, maybe the colleague is really depressed. You don't even know the guy that well. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a significant portion of the session is focused on someone you're working with to help them, you know? So it's uh, a lot goes into it and everything. And the other thing is, is when someone comes to me, I always tell people, don't feed the medium, right? So it's just like yeah. going to the zoo. You don't want to feed the animals, do you? Go Not to Yellowstone really. Park, they have yeah. signs, don't feed the bears. So with mediumship, you don't want to, uh, as a medium, I, I really mm-hmm. don't want to know anything about the person I'm working through in a general sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, it really does. But you have, I mean, on, on some television mediums, for example, does anyone here know someone with the letter E in their name? Uh, okay, let me see, Edwards. Uh, what's his first name? Well, it could be E in the, it, it could be e in the middle of oh, the... Oh, John middle, Edwards. Right? John yeah. Edwards, yeah. I, does, I know him. Does anyone know someone with the letter J in their name? You, you know, like throwing things yeah. out like this, right? Yeah. And then what happens is, of course, the person starts, oh my God, that's my uncle. He fell off the rowboat and drowned in 1962 and all this stuff. And Now, if someone who's skeptical, what are they going to think? They're exactly. going to think, oh my gosh, this medium's fishing for information, mm-hmm. cold read, whatever, right? Now, the medium may be very sincere, really uh, strongly tuned in, you know, this type of thing. Like John yeah. Edwards, very sincere, you know, but when people do ask questions, though, the skeptics, they're counting how many questions the person asks and well, I, 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 I guess plus the fact that his producers were going and taking a B-roll at the place of the preset people, that certainly didn't help him. Right, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. But I, I just know that like the way I've been yeah. trained, I just say things as a statement. Right, right. And I really try to minimize, like if someone says yes, I understand, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Or if they say, I'm not really sure, could you give me more, that's fine, because then I can get, go ask for more information and get clarification. But I really don't need to know anything about who I'm working with. Do you understand? I mean, that's really important. And people should test mediums. You know, it shouldn't be one of these things where you go for a session and the medium's asking you know, 20 questions. Mm-hmm. You know, go, go, the most elderly person is your mother in spirit or is your grandmother in spirit. You know, well, what, do you, what do you think? <laughs> you know, right. it, it, it's just unnecessary. And, and certainly someone who doesn't believe in this, I mean, it just gives ammunition to them. How long does a session usually take? Usually with a session, you know, there's a beginning and a middle and an end. Mm -hmm. Uh, Typically, I mean, if I'm working with someone, you know, usually I do like hour-long sessions, sometimes half hours. But just in general, I mean, it really depends on the need of the person because you could certainly work with a person. And there's going to be a point where the energy will change and you're going to realize that it's time to bring it to a close. And, you know, usually people ask questions and stuff, too. I mean, there are some people, they could come to you and they could keep you there for five hours if they had their way. You wow. Know? How do you, how do you yeah, prevent how do you prevent a person from developing a, um, you know, a, a, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, a, you know, going to you for a, for a habit. Yeah, like a dependency. A well, dependency, that, that happens yeah. with a lot of people who are needy. You know, mm-hmm. you have someone, and not just with a medium, but it can happen with their psychologist or counselor, you know, this kind of thing. Right. Uh, and really, that's not healthy. It's not ethical. It's not professional in terms of what you're doing. So that I, I've been fortunate that really hasn't – I've been able to prevent that type of situation in general from happening. And you, you really just have to set boundaries with people in, in, in that type of situation because there are people who will – you know, they'll call you up at uh, seven in the morning and ask oh you what gosh. color sweater they should wear. But that's that's not a question for mediums to ask. It's not fortune telling. Right. You know, what what do you want to eat for dinner next week? You know, you're going to eat spaghetti. You're going to eat a man with a gold tooth. All these things are going to happen. <laughs> you know, who cares? Even if it did happen, that information doesn't change your life. You see, there's a difference between a psychic reading and, and spirit communication. What's the difference? Well, the difference is when you're working psychically – the psychic or the intuitive is, is, is mentally and telepathically, energetically making a connection or a link with mm-hmm. the energy field or aura of the individual or the energy of an object or maybe even a physical location, the atmosphere of energetically of a location. A medium is using that same intuitive ability. They're raising their vibration and they're connecting with personalities in the spirit dimension who are feeding them the information. So it's coming from living people who, who just lack physical bodies. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, uh-huh. in, in your opinion, is yeah. reincarnation real? Oh, reincarnation? Well, the, the body changes every seven years, doesn't it? So it, it's uh, life is eternal. Mm-hmm. 
And so why, how, how could you possibly come here for 70 years, 100 years, maybe two or three years, depending on the situation? Uh, if you can come here, you know, because life at conception, right, the spirit soul has to be present within the womb in order for everything to function. It's not just a matter of chemical interaction. You know, you certainly need the chemical interaction for mm-hmm. physical, but you have to have the anim- animating force, you know, consciousness. So, so definitely reincarnation is a fact. Now, someone can be a medium and not necessarily accept that for whatever reason. Right. But I, I get I get information during my sessions, you know, in mm-hmm. past lives. I mean, can you prove it? In most cases, probably not. You know. Yeah. Well, here here's my question then. Uh-huh. If if reincarnation is real, and let's say I come to you and I say, uh, Stephen, I would like to communicate with my Uncle Stan, and and you try to communicate with Uncle Stan, what happens if he has already been reincarnated and he is no longer in spirit? Yeah, people always ask that question, and well, what do you, obviously if he's if he's not in spirit, he's not going to be able to come through, is he? <laughs> But, uh, you know, life is eternal. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I have in my book, you know, one of the chapters in Mediumship Master is all about, you know, past life readings, this type of thing. And it's pretty amazing because just like environmentally, uh, we can be conditioned certain ways in this life. Now, those conditioning, that conditioning can be very positive or can really mess us up. Yeah. So, you know, 50 years later, you know, it can affect us. Just things that happen when we we're little or growing up, you know, our third wife left us, our second wife left us, our fourth wife left us. And it totally messes us up. But there's also things that happen way before this life that potentially can affect us one way or another. You know, what, what are someone's tendencies or someone's hangups? You know, why do they have those particular things? So when you get into, let's say, information about past lives, the higher spirit teachers, if it's necessary, will come through with that type of information in relating it to the present situation of where a person's at. And that can help someone heal or give them more realization of why circumstances are a certain way in terms of their attitudes toward things. So it's really fascinating, pretty deep. Let's say somebody's committed suicide uh-huh. due to whatever reason. Are you able to communicate with their spirit as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I get people who commit suicide all the time come through. It's uh, pretty common. I mean, obviously, someone who's in that type of state, usually they're really depressed mm-hmm. and it's despondency. You know, when they go into the spirit world, there's going to be therapists or healers who are going to work with them and help them. On the other side? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just like I said, if you oh. need intensive psychotherapy, mm-hmm. you don't get it. You're going to, you know, you're going to have to work on those things. You can't, if you're a total jerk, you know, you're just not nice. You're, you know, have like lack of morals or lack of personal ethics. Those qualities that are less than spiritual or any type of personal hang-ups, they go with you. Speaking about going, you and I have to go for a news break, my friend. Hey, it's great talking to you again, Stephen. And I'm, oh, I'm, so, I'm so glad that you're doing so well. And congratulations on your new book. Exo Nation, Stephen Herman is our special guest. His website is www.stephenhermanmedium.com. That's S-T-E-V-E-N. I'm sorry, Steve Herman. Medium.com, S-T-E-V-E-H-E-R-M-A-N-N-M-E-D-I-U-M.com. And uh, we'll both be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Exxon Nation, November the 11th, 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. The return match of a debate with Stanton T. Friedman, the great-grandfather of ufology, and Michael Horn, the North American media representative for Billy Meyer, both discussing the results of the research that Stanton did on the Billy Meyer story after our very first debate. Once again, that is Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday, November the 11th, 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. The Billy Meyer debate continues here on the X Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. 
broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. Jeff Gilson didn't go out looking for adventure, danger, or the answers to most of the controversial political intrigues of the past 30 years. But he found all three when he began investigating the mysterious death of his close friend, Margaret Thatcher's favorite speechwriter. Just an ordinary guy living in a small, sleepy suburb 20 miles outside of London, Jeff's questions provoked a powerful response on both sides of the Atlantic. He was shot at, warned off by the CIA, and formed a close bond with one of Israel's most notorious intelligence officers. Relive Jeff's gripping adventure in his fast-paced book, Maggie's Hammer. Peel away the layers of establishment deception and discover, as Jeff did, that his friend was an assassin with British intelligence, that Great Britain has been America's secret hitman for the past 30 years, and that Princess Diana was not the target in that Parisian tunnel. All of this and more when you visit www.maggieshammer.com and find the link to buying this explosive book online. More and more ordinary people feel they no longer have control of their lives. Jeff fought back. He asked the difficult questions. He set out to redesign his own destiny. And you can do the same using Maggie's Hammer as your guide. Don't waste a moment. Buy it today. Visit www.maggieshammer.com. Jesus came back now and insisted that we listen to him. How would the world be different if Christians really followed the Gospels? For 2,000 years we've been practicing a religion. Now it's finally time to get it right. Read Liberating Jesus, new from Roberta Grimes. Meet the Jesus you never knew. Roberta uses afterlife evidence and biblical analysis to prove that Jesus is exactly right. Learning the lessons that he came to teach is the reason we are born at all. Roberta says he has come back now to insist that we actually listen to him so we can begin to use his teachings to unite and transform the world. Liberating Jesus wherever books are sold. Jesus has the answers and it's not too late. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Good real estate websites are not just about showing listings, but offering visitors valuable information about neighborhoods, market statistics, tips, and personal insights. Luckily, you will find that on Roost, but you won't on many other real estate websites in Budapest. That's why we created Roost. Roost is a website with tailored results for the foreign investor, curated by Hungarian-loving expats who found their home abroad and decided to Roost in Budapest. Let Roost help you get started on the right foot. Whether you intend to live, work, play, retire, or simply invest abroad, Roost offers all types of properties in Budapest, from affordable studios to luxury homes. From neighborhood insights like where to grab a great coffee or how to buy property, our team of local experts can answer your questions and speak to the direct concerns of a foreign investor. Buying foreign property is an exciting and complex adventure. It can also be very time-consuming and costly if you don't have the best information and resources at hand. Roost provides professional real estate services and assistance to an international clientele of foreign property investors and rental apartment owners in Budapest. For more information on Roost, visit their website at www.roost.co. That's www.rooste.co. to access the knowledge of the universe is much easier for us to access than we may believe. Brad Johnson, Conscious Matrix Communicator, is one of these unique individuals who is able to access a strong connection to the universal mind. Through his connection, Brad has assisted thousands of clients from all over the world through natural intuitive assistance. 
The intuitive information received is vast, covering a wide range of subjects. Brad's innate ability includes being able to access one's own universal matrix to help them realize their potential to create a life of profound greatness. One-on-one -on -one private sessions with Brad Johnson are available to anyone from around the world. Brad is also a proficiently trained psychic, Akashic Records reader, an online spiritual teacher, founder of his own unique and powerful healing system, Body Regeneration Healing, as well as a professional conscious channeler in communication with his own higher self-consciousness known as Adronis. For more information or to book a service appointment with Brad Johnson, visit his website at www.consciousmatrix.com. That's www.consciousmatrix.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash xzone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash xzone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. Welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone. Stephen Herman is our special guest. www.stevehermanmedium.com is his website. Steve, I had a thought during the commercial break. When you are in the spirit world, well, I've been told by many that there is no future, there is no present, okay. there is no past, it is just now. Yes. Okay. Now, if that is the case, how can we connect with a spirit from the past if there is no past or, or a future, but just now? Well, yeah. actually, when, when time's all relative, it's just like mm -hmm. if you go physically into outer space. Right. And you go away really, really, really far, really, really, really fast, and then you come back, and everyone's aged, or they've all they're all deceased, and you're still relatively the same age. So in the spirit world, you can have someone, for example, they have a near death experience, they go into the spirit world. It seems like it's three hours, mm -hmm. a real long period. They come back, and it was only four minutes. So time's relative; it's different, but just, just like a dream, still is a sense of time. It's mm -hmm. not like there's just eternal now. So. If that At is least the, not on the immediate aspect levels, you know? Oh, gotcha. So, so does that mean as a medium you can call a spirit from the future? Well, that's not really how it works. I mean, obviously you've got someone, they're here in the physical body, so no, you wouldn't be able to contact someone from the future that way. No way. Hmm. Before you were saying that when you try when you try to connect with a spirit on the other side, you have helpers. Who are your helpers? Yeah, that's correct. Who are well, your it, someone who's a helper? I, I don't use the, the term guide mm -hmm. because they're they're really helpers. They're specialists with this type of communication. So let's just say there's someone like yourself, and you're really interested in developing as a medium. You start going to classes and mm -hmm. meditating and working on it. 
you would attract energetically, you know, like attracts like yeah. individuals in the spirit world who would assist you with the process and they would connect with you, attune with you, blend with you and train with you. So just as you're having to learn how to open up and work with them, they'd also have to learn to work with you as well. And there's different different helpers of different functions as part of the mechanics of the process. So basically, you're developing a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, it's it, well, our professional relationship. Yeah. I mean, it, it's all about service. It's all about love, and mm -hmm. it's just like you know, someone's grandmother's in the spirit world. Just because she's over there, that doesn't mean that she understands how to communicate. So she has to learn the process. She even has to rehearse it, and then she works through the intermediaries of the medium. And those me the mediums intermediaries or helpers, they know the medium like a book. You know, you're dealing with mental communication. So they would act as a go-between for, for the grandmother to come through. Even if the medium's directly describing all the stuff about her. Mm -hmm. You understand there's other people who are there to make the communications happen. Why is meditation so important? Well, meditation's really important because it helps us to know ourselves better and to go inside ourselves and to connect with God within our heart. And the other thing, of course, with meditation is it raises our vibration. And when we connect with God, we're going to be connected with higher consciousness, which is really what's important. As, as a medium, have you ever had the spirit of someone that you're communicating with manifest itself? No. Are you talking about physically Physically, manifest, yes. Physically. Physically. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it kind of depends. I mean, most of the communication that I do, it's, it's mental communication. Mm -hmm. Now, with mental mediumship, that's dependent upon the intuitive mental connection, energetic connection that medium has with, with those in the spirit world. You also have physical mediumship. Now, with physical mediumship, they use the chemistry of the medium or other people who are present to create phenomena or manifestations. So you, you can certainly have that type of uh, situation take place. What's the scoop on ectoplasm? Oh, ectoplasm? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, not like, it's not like the Ghostbusters. No. Ectoplasm is a substance which is, is actually taken uh, from the membrane within, within the body of the medium from each cell. And it, it's something which is, it's, can be as solid as the chair that you're sitting on, or it can be more like a gaseous or vapor you know, where you can put your hand right through it, mm. or it can be more like a putty where you can actually mold it, so to speak. In some beginning change, uh, stages, it can even be invisible. You know, you're not even necessarily going to see it, but it's, uh, it, it, it is a substance. I mean, I've, I've had it come out of my own body, and I felt it with my own hands from my own body. Uh, it's, all, it, it, it's definitely, there's places you can go, and people wear glow-in-the-dark uh, sheets, you know, and come out in, in the dark, this type of thing. Mm -hmm. But it, it's something which... It's very rare, and there have to be the right types of conditions to develop that or to produce that type of phenomena involving ectoplasm. If someone listening tonight would want to become a medium and to develop their mediumship abilities, how would they start, Steve? Well, you know, the big thing is is you have to ask what are your motivations, mm -hmm. and, and it's not about uh, – you know, being important or having other people ask you for advice so you can feel great about yourself or this type of thing. I mean, people sometimes get into mystic powers because of that. It, it can be a real ego type of thing. And that's not really the purpose behind it. It's to help other people. And if someone really has that propensity, I, I think at any point, it's really important to be emotionally stable, emotionally balanced, and spiritually have higher motivations for it. But in terms of... Uh, Obviously, intellectually, one would want to read as many books about it on the subject as possible and really learn about it. I think it's also good to go to some type of weekly group, you know, or circle. A lot of spiritualist churches offer those or other individuals. You know, you could go sit in, in, in a development circle and learn how to properly work with that. Uh, I, I teach a lot of programs worldwide. I have my mediumship mastery training program, which, you know, I, I do a lot of uh, – you know, groups, residential sure. types of groups with training, plus individual workshops. But I think it's important to study in a general sense with as many people as possible, read as many books as possible about it, and, and really experience it. And that you can't force that. That's something which takes place usually as gradually with people over a period of time. How long would it take someone 
before they could it's, actually sit down and communicate. It's 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 ongoing. I mean, you could have someone, for example, uh, you know, the very first class they sit mm-hmm. in. I mean, they're like amazingly open. You know, they they go into the in, into the dentist's office and they hear voices. You know, and they need to be medicated. Yeah, that <laughs> you know, nature of oxide will do wonders. Right, exactly. But you know, there's people that are really open. Just like you have some people from when they're really little, they're fantastic artists, and they don't seem to have any training. Yeah. You know, they go in, but. Even someone who is like a Renaissance master, they apprenticed with all these other masters, didn't they? They studied they sure for years. They sure so did. mediumship, you're a, I mean, I've been into this for decades, years and years, been involved in this. I'm still a student, still learning. You know, I, I'm always trying to improve and everything. And I'm always learning, you know, I'm always trying to expand in terms and enhance my abilities and and, 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 and and go up to higher levels with it. So you never really stop with it. Now there's some people Let's just say they were an engineer. They're really analytically oriented. It might take them a number of years to overcome certain blocks that someone else just might not have. You see? Hmm. So it's very individualistic. But a good teacher is going to know how to work with that person and bring it out of them. Let me ask you. I, I love asking this question to psychics and to huh? to mediums like yourself. What is the strangest thing that has happened to you during one of your sessions? I'm not sure if there's anything that's really been strange. It's all pretty ordinary. All right. <laughs> but, what about, know, what about the people f- coming through from the spirit world? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's always pretty wild, you know, some of the information they come through with. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a pretty, you, it's every, I mean, you're always learning, you're mm-hmm. always experiencing, you know, what they have to say and everything. So no two sessions are the same. Especially if the energy is really strong, it's quite amazing in terms of what they're able to do. What about this this movie uh, Ghost with Patrick Swayze, Whoopi Goldberg? Okay. How how close to reality was was that movie? Well, it's Hollywood. You know, yeah. there's there's some ideas in there though that are really nice. I think whoever wrote the script, you know, came up with a lot of the the, the ideas there. Mm-hmm. We searched it pretty well and everything. I, I think you know that there were some higher concepts that were introduced in that movie, and, and certainly the, the mechanics of it aren't exactly like that. But you know, the, the, I, there's certainly a, a lot of what they were portraying. I, I feel was accurate based on my experiences. Is it hard for you because I, 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 I as a parent, when you are asked by someone to communicate with their child on the other side, is that hard for you? Uh, well, you know, kids come through. It yeah. just depends. I mean, the thing is, is it's not really – I've got four kids of my own and yeah. everything. And, I mean, if one of them were to pass over, I mean, I'd be devastated. You know, sure, Because you physically, wouldn't? you know, yeah. you really love someone you're with. You can't hug someone yeah. if they're not physically there. You know, we have relationships, so we're attached mm-hmm. with, with, with around us. But when someone goes into the spirit world, if it's really going to help that person and it will help the person's spirit – They'll probably have that person come through, and that that may be a child, it may be a baby, you know, that that type of situation. Uh, you you name it. I mean, you can have you know kids come through that that you know they were miscarried or something before Gosh. birth, you know, that type of thing too. Uh, <clears throat> life is eternal, so. Sometimes when when you're doing readings uh, and communicating with the other side, do you get uh, fragrances that come over that the person who is. You, you, that you're doing this for can recognize a perfume, uh, yeah, a tobacco well, smell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get it mentally. So our psychic senses correspond to our physical senses. So mm-hmm. you know, with clairvoyance, being able to see, clairaudience, hearing, clairsentience, the sensing, feeling, mm-hmm. claircognizance, just the knowing, instantaneous, yeah. is in your head, the whole idea, the concept. And then we also have smelling and tasting. So I remember I had like this one. Uh, you'll like this. I had this one group of ladies years ago in Massachusetts and they showed up for a session. And anyway, when I tuned in, the first thing I smelled was absolutely disgusting. And I felt like the belly was kind of big and I was wearing an undershirt that hadn't been changed in a week or two. Now, I think it was their father. And this guy never changed his clothes. <laughs> now, it's not like he's unhygienic in spirit, but mm-hmm. this is, you know, in terms of evidential information and a sense of humor, what he is coming through with, you see. So, uh, yeah, you smell all sorts of things. It can be pretty vile. <laughs> really? What If somebody is, is, is planning or thinking of going to see a medium because they want to communicate with someone on the other side, 
What uh-huh. should they look for? What are the what are the red flags when it comes to knowing that someone is not out there for your best interest? I'm not talking about you. You're highly qualified. You've got a great reputation, but there's a lot of unscrupulous people out there. Yeah, well, you should be. I think the big thing is, is you, you you want to be open, but you also want to be skeptical at the same mm-hmm. time. Now, someone who doesn't really understand it is going to really not understand the difference between a psychic and a medium. It's not fortune telling. I mean, you want to ask what what are a medium's credentials? You know, this type of thing too. And un- unfortunately, I mean, you could do all sorts of. I mean, you could claim that you're channeling all these ascended masters from the intergalactic council or God knows I've, what. I've had those. You. I've had those ones on the show. I'm I'm sure you have. Yeah. You know, but all of this should be validated. It's it's one of these things where you want to test the spirit world. So. Now, the other thing, keep in mind, someone could be an excellent medium and maybe the connections just aren't going to be there. It's just like if you were in the spirit world, you might really like me, you could feel comfortable with me mm-hmm. on the same wavelength. It's going to be easy for me to bring you through. Maybe another medium who's excellent just wouldn't be the same you know, in terms of communication. Uh, so if, if a spirit loved one is on the same wavelength as the medium, because it's mind-to-mind communication, it's going right. to work really well. Same thing with the, 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 the sitter or the recipient. If they can really resonate with with the medium, it's, they're probably going to get better results, so to speak. But really, uh, someone who has professional training that's ethical about it is very important. And unfortunately, my gosh, it's, I call it microwavable mediumship. You know, it's just like <laughs> I go to the Saturday workshop. Now I'm a, I'm a master. Of it. Yeah. I just go do. It. I can I can go online. You know, I I like stuffed animals. I mean, there's a place in California. I mean, one of my stuffed animals is now, I think, a bishop. You, you can be ordained. I mean, and for 20 bucks or whatever it is, they'll send you the piece of paper. Oh, God, I did that with my three dogs one day during a show. You, I had you them, you know, that. went no. on the Internet, put their names in there, and bang, there's the certificates. They're now ordained you, ministers. You I don't think they're... high school diplomas, too, and they're yeah. PhDs, you know? Yeah, but, but, anyone you, yeah, but you see, on, on the Internet, yeah. the PhD stands for piled higher and deeper. Yeah, right, exactly, but... Yeah. But people don't know the difference. So you, you have people who, who advertise a lot of stuff and it's just baloney. You know, so it, 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 it's good to be educated about this and test spirit uh, and go into it, you know, and just expect, you know, expect the best and, and see what the results are. But I, I think in general, people are going to find different results with different people. And it usually doesn't happen all at once. It happens over a period of time with a number of different mediums. Mm. Otherwise, then they get end up getting disappointed because you know, they want to hear from their mom, and right. you know it may or may not happen that way. How do people react when they come to see you, and you just can't make that connection? Nothing comes through. Well, it depends on the person. I mean, with with, with me, I mean, my experiences. I mean, I could have you know, let's just say I had ten people come one after the other. Mm-hmm. It's possible one of those people would just not. I, I call them readings from hell. It's like there's this wall there, you know, they're just not easy to work with. It's nothing to do with me. I'm all tuned in, my vibration's high, but it has to do with the chemistry, sometimes the person's attitude. You know, we're talking about atmosphere. Right. Um, and really the, the energy, the mental atmosphere which is created with any kind of session, whether it's one on one or a group, affects the quality and the nature of the communication. So there's gonna be some people who just Maybe they're apprehensive or they're skeptical in the negative sense or they just want things done a certain way. The easiest people I find to work with are probably their mediums because they bring in the right types of conditions for this. So what are the best conditions? Well, the best conditions, I mean, I, I would say are enthusiasm. If someone is really enthusiastic about it, they're really positive about it, they really are into it, mm-hmm. they're into spiritual growth. That type of thing is going to help. I mean, now there's different mediums work differently. When, when I work, I, I bring through loved ones. I might bring through guides, this kind of thing. And usually it's like higher guidance. Some mediums, because they're different than me, might not bring through it. Exactly. They might just bring through your mother. And that's it, you know. And she says hello and gives you some flowers. But with mediumship, it can be very, 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 very deep. But it, so much of it depends on the medium, so to speak. Uh but, you know, there's going to be some people you're going to have better results with in, in, in any case. And it's because it's, it's, it's men, the mental way. Like if, if they're able to resonate, the medium and the person who's the recipient, as well as those in spirit. What about animals? Can you communicate with animals? Yeah, well, animals come through all the time. You, you, my gosh, I've had cows. I've, I remember once I was in Austria and, and one of my friends was working. And 
every single person in, 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 in the auditorium mm -hmm. he brought horses through for. And they all recognized all the horses. Because <laughs> in Austria, horses are like the family dog would be here. You know, people really know their, their, their animals pretty well there in terms of horses. So, yeah, you can have birds, monkeys, uh, cats, dogs, you name it. Listen, uh, we're, we've got to say so long in a, in a couple of minutes, but I'd like you to, I'd like you to tell the Exo Nation tonight what they can do at home to try and communicate with a loved one on the other side. Yeah, well, the best thing to do is is, is to pray. You know, put the thoughts out there, but mm -hmm. you know, to learn how to calm the mind, relax the body. When you relax the body, the mind's going to be very peaceful and receptive. And just pay attention to your breathing. And, and when your mind's within that silence, that's when you're going to actually intuitively start to receive uh, information from the spirit world in terms of guidance. And it's it's different from your own imagination. And there's a whole different feeling, a different intensity or texture to it. So something which is coming in from an external source, something that's just a product coming up from your own unconscious mind. Now, in the beginning, someone might not be able to tell the difference, but that's why someone has to just like we brush our teeth every day, yeah. don't they get black and they fall out eventually? <laughs> so with, 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 with this, we, we have to meditate every day, you know, and work at it and everything. And, you know, my, my book, Medium Mastery, is excellent. You know, it, it really gets into a lot of that in, in detail. I mean, it's good for people into it, but someone who's novice would, would, would certainly get a lot out of it. It's got 84 different exercises. And you, there's a lot of things you can do with a group too that you can't do on your own on the other hand mm -hmm. you can meditate every day on your own and i think that's essential for people steve it's been great talking to you let our listeners know what your website is buddy oh it's uh steve herman medium.com and it's herman has two ends at the end h-e-r-m-a-n and -N. i'm on facebook i mean they can friend me i mean i really i really I like your energy a lot. I'm really, I'm very happy to be on your show. Oh, and I think what you're doing is awesome. Well, thank you very much for your kind words. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. My very best to your family. And I look forward to the next time you join us back here in the Exxon, Steve. So until then, stay safe, my friend. Yeah, you too. And God bless you. And you have an awesome week. And keep up all the wonderful work. It's really appreciated. You help so many people with what you're doing. Bless you, my friend. Take care right. of yourself. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Exo Nation, my guest this hour was Steve Herman. That's Herman with two N's. His website is www.steveherman.com. Steve Herman Psychic. No, Steve Herman's Medium. Thanks, Craig. Dot com. Uh, I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exo from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario. And once again, Exo Nation... Steve's website is stevehermanmedium.com. That's stevehermanmedium.com. I'm Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. We'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue right here from our broadcast center in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away.